It's a beautiful snowy day in Pennsylvania. I'm in the anthracite coal region of the state, joined by, once again, my buddy Journey with Jay, who's up there already doing some exploring without me. <laughs> this is the Monoy uh, Incline Plain. This was built in 1861 or opened in 1861, coincidentally, the same year that the American Civil War started. And this was a massive system here, a, a, a giant engine house used to pull up to 200 tons of coal cars up the broad mountain here. 6,000 horsepower steam engines. They were the most powerful engines in the world at, at, at that point. There are tunnels all over this place, so we're going to get down inside the tunnels. There's actually some rail cars still here, and uh, we're going to show you the incline plane. It was almost a half a mile, uh, elevation of like 530 feet or something like that. There's not that many pictures. There's not that much information, but we're going to look around, see what we can find. So some people pronounce pronounce it Mahanoi, right? And some people pronounce it Mahanoi. Mahanoi. That's the way I always said it. There's the Mahanoi yeah. plane. I'll say it both, so I don't have those people that get a tummy ache and get upset because I don't know how to pronounce every name of every place I go to. Monoy. <laughs> On any given 24-hour period, as many as 900 rail cars were hauled up this mountain by this incredible system here. Look at this tree growing out of the, the shoots. How funny is that? And this place closed in 1932, so it's been, you know, basically 90 years that it's been abandoned. I think this main building was uh, demolished in the 1950s, so. Some people have called this the steam house. Maybe it's just all, all the same, steam house, engine house. This is where the muscle was created to pull those train cars up the mountainside as much as 200 tons in weight. All these were coal chutes. You can see actually the little chutes. So all these were like hoppers kind of for coal. Some were used to power this uh, engine house or head house and um, some were used for distribution or for the coal cars to dump into. So this is as best I can do uh, to line up the one photo here. So you can see that this ramp looking thing was really, there was a railing here. And um, obviously the, uh, the bins are on the side here, the hoppers. Straight up here, that little short wall there was a control room and then again from the picture you can see that the uh, the trains the rails would come right up here into this huge shed and the tracks would go right over this i don't know why they got rid of all the supports where the tracks used to be but yeah at some point there were tracks right here I think that there was a, a track that went on to here. So the trains would back onto here and dump the coal that they had down, in, down into those hoppers. And then there was another train track system down below that would be filled by those, um, those chutes. Again, just a theory. If you know better, definitely, uh, comment and let me know but there's a lot of them probably 35 of these things walking a little further beyond the engine house you come across these train cars that are up here this is an interesting sight sitting about 15 feet high on this <laughs> stressed railroad tie wall here
that looks like a you know some sort of a hopper and then there was a ladder to get up and down here yeah look at this one I doubt, nah, everything's been broken off. I couldn't even open that if I tried. Look at this, there you go, you can, can move that. Let's see what it looks like inside here. So I wonder what the, if it was just for storage? They obviously weren't meant to move. People hanging out, having a campfire in here. <laughs> so I don't, I don't, is this even connected? Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Strange. So we're thinking that those cars were pretty much just kind of dropped there or left there. They might have had a purpose, but it, they didn't move because the foundation of the, wall, of the building was right there. But where Jay is standing, that probably was a track that came in and went right onto these. So the train, if my theory is correct, the train would come right over this and drop the coal down into these coal bins with uh, the little chutes all the way down you can see these these coal chutes yeah look they all have some sort of metal or steel doors go in here and see it gives you a better idea You know, I don't even know what they could do when it comes to like preservation. I, I mean, it's just, it's just crumbling. I mean, what are you, you going to do? You're going to dump, you know, millions of dollars into this. Amazing history, but just doesn't seem like it would make sense. This was a, the controller's house or something, right? So the controller would be in here and uh, would be able to watch the uh, rail cars being pulled up the mountain. We're making our way down where the inclined plane was and starting to see a bunch of the original uh, railroad ties here. It's totally overgrown now, full of trees, but it just shot straight down there. Now somewhere down here is a tunnel that used to go underneath the plane. So we're gonna try to find that right now. I think it's somewhere down, down there. You can see the stonework. That's the inclined plane up there. Now I'm not sure, but I think this was called the Bear Ridge Tunnel. I could be could be confused. Um, I think you can cross through here. There's some cave-ins, but we're going to check it out. Now, according to what I read, this was a narrow gauge railroad, most likely leading to um, a coal mine directly in the area here. It was built so the coal mining work was not interrupted by the inclined plane and vice versa and it has an interesting curve to the point where 
know, it's pretty, pretty dark in here. Uh, of course, there's some cave-ins. Some daylight there. I don't know when this was built. Jay and I are trying to look for a date or something here. Let's see if maybe on this side. No, it doesn't look like it. That's where we just came out of, and then this is the inclined plane right here past that weird wooden spool. Shoots up there at like 28 degrees, pretty steep for trains, and continues down. This is more of a path. So this is one of as many as 50 mines that were right in this area at the bottom of the Monoi Plain. And it just so happens that this one's, this one is open. All right, going inside here. Wow, look at all these <laughs> stalactite. And oh, even better, the bottom ones, the stalagmites. something you see every day. Look at this old beam. Beautiful. Make a good, um, a beam would make a cool fire man or a fireplace mantle. Oh yeah, there's a lot of them. Like this is the end of the uh, end of the road here. Major cave in. Oh no, wait. Maybe we'll get in there. Yeah, that's cool. So look, you can see up in here. So there's a massive cave in where you can look up and you can actually look further. Oh, wow. You could go further if you wanted, but it's it's like a real bad cave-in, so I don't think that that's a good idea. You could totally climb up in there. What was the name of that tour? Uh, number nine. The number nine, but it was called something else, right? Uh, it was just the number nine Lansford. Lansford the yeah. Yeah. Lansford. If you nine. haven't seen that video yet, Jay and I took a tour of the Lansford mine number nine Lansford uh, mine very cool video I'll put a link down below you should check that video out Jay just noticed that looks like this is a vein that they kind of got started on that's all coal collapse happened they had to stop yeah either a collapse so they had to stop or they just whatever for some reason stopped but it's even on the it's all coal beam here yeah that's cool you could really see the shine in it all across there. This place is huge. Yeah. Looks like a castle. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you can see the little fins where the shoots. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, this was built in 1861 or it was completed in 1861. I don't know how long it would have taken to build this huge structure, but it is monstrous. This is down in the uh, center here, where I was talking about before, where there's just holes everywhere that lead down into a series of tunnels or, um, I don't know if, if, if there's a, you know, rooms down there, a basement, but you can imagine being here in the summertime when everything is in bloom, it'd be difficult to see them and they're all over the place. I 
think we went the absolute worst way you could possibly go. <laughs> Don't hit your head on that. Here we go. We got light. All right. Well, the bottom is all coal ash. So, oh yeah, look, I mean, these are definitely shoots. We didn't even notice that. See how they're angled? Right. So, um, I'm not really sure how that worked, but obviously. The ceiling shape is cool, too. Oh, yeah, look at that. Huh. All right, this is where we're going here. No, we came in and then went there. Flooded area that you came, right? Yeah. The other area was just down in there. This is a totally different area down here. All right. There's a bunch of garbage down in here. Jay, you might actually not be coming down here because it's pretty deep. Jay only has sneakers on. Now I know why the tires are here. Oh, somehow my feet are still getting wet even though I have boots on. Oh, jeez. This is actually really cool. That there, that Definitely keeps on going. I could probably get over there. Hang on. Look at the supports here. This was made to hold up some serious, serious weight. where that goes. All right. Yeah, see there's all these little holes. Look at this. Obviously it was bigger at some point. Completely caved in. All right, I'm not going to cross this water again. I'm going to uh, climb out this hole right here. That was interesting. <laughs> I didn't have to get my feet wet again, at least. <laughs> A lot of interesting history here. Thanks to uh, Journey with Jay for showing me this place. I had no idea this existed. He's got a nice shirt on, doesn't he? <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.